Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Real Quick, episode 75. Today, we have our patron sponsored movie review. Shout out to our patron, Marcellus. He has recommended us 2020's horror film, The Empty Man. Um, this was all of our first time watching this film. Um, I'm happy that we got a lot of uh, horror recommendations. I'm trying to, to get Tyler and Cam more into this I genre. So. It. I actually think The Empty Man is a good like way to start because I don't personally think it was like as frightening as everyone had made it out or at least um, as frightening as I may have expected it to be. Um, so obviously, I'm going to start with Tyler. Cam looks like he just turned off his camera. So Tyler, not the biggest horror guy, but it seems like you can tolerate horror here and there. What were your thoughts on The Empty Man? And obviously, we'll do the normal quick thoughts and then we'll get into spoilers. Not much. I think we'll go into on spoilers. Um, but Tyler, give us your thoughts on this horror film. Yeah, so I honestly found it like decently scary. I didn't find it like terrifying or anything, but <clears throat> not a ton of jump scares. There's a couple like, not jump scares, but like, you know, there's a lot of modes where something like quickly flashes on the screen real quick. They can kind of like be a little jarring, but a lot of this is about like dread and tension. There's so many scenes in this that are just so long looking into the void of the darkness and you're just kind of staring into it, waiting for something to pop out or waiting to kind of have your brain make up some images that aren't really there. Um, so there was definitely moments that had me on edge. Definitely was like more feeling more tense than I was scared, but definitely for me as like a horror wuss, I was definitely like thoroughly um, moved in terms of how intense I thought this movie was. This movie is like a one that like the production was kind of crazy. Like it's uh, it was came out around the time like Fox and Disney had their merger. And this is one like once Disney acquired it kind of was like, we don't really want to release this anymore. And it kind of got thrown by the wayside. So this is a movie that really was kind of went through a ton of production issues. I feel you kind of feel that two hours, 15 minutes is way too long for this movie. So um, and I don't know for like, I really appreciated the, I thought this was a super complex script, like the complex lore behind this. I know it's based off some source material, but they really tried to dig into this and really make it a very complicated plot weaved together with a lot of background lore and a lot of confusing plot lines that really make you wonder what's going on. So I appreciated that because I thought it was an interesting script and an interesting screenplay. But for every moment I thought was super interesting, there was a moment where I was like, this is the reason I don't love horror movies because it's just like kind of stupid and bad looking like the whole opening 20 minutes, which I said I was digging because I was digging it story wise, but it looked so bad like them on the mountains in the snow. I was like, this is like high school movie with some buddies production quality right now. I think like there's a lot of moments that look pretty bad. Um, a lot of like weird moments where it's just like classic horror movie. You're like, how, how the hell did you not see that coming? But it's whatever you kind of got to put up with those, but I don't know Thought it was too long. And a lot of it was just cause there were so many scenes that were just long and dragged out and I get it. Like it definitely was effective in terms of building tension and making me more on edge, but it also made the movie super long. Um, I gave it a six out of 10 for three stars. Uh, like I said, I was sufficiently like uh, creeped out and, you know, on my on edge of my seat the entire time of this movie. Um, and yeah, I, I felt like it was a genre bending horror movie. It was supernatural plus like a lot of cult elements, especially towards the end. So it was interesting and nothing really major to spoil, but there's more stuff I'll go deeper in when we get into the spoilers. But for right now, I'd say three stars is where I'm rocking at. I liked it for sure. Uh, it just went on super long, but uh, it was it's definitely a complicated movie. Like I think I I can see why this became like a cult classic because there's definitely a lot here to to chew on. Yeah, I, I feel like the one thing that we're all gonna echo is that this movie just runs a little bit too long, especially in my opinion. I I loved the first 25 minutes of this movie. I was so locked in. I texted you guys about it. I was like, wow, everything before the opening title card just was so like intriguing it was so just out of pocket things came out of nowhere and then the long run time just kind of like all it did was like remove me from those opening 25 minutes because the rest of the movie just didn't live up to like how locked into i was during those opening 25 minutes someone one of my mutuals on letterbox wrote a review on this movie and he said the start of this movie felt like its own short film and then the rest of the movie felt like they took a short film and tried to make it a full length feature film and didn't entirely know how they wanted to go about it um cam you as well not the biggest horror guy on this podcast i know you said it wasn't the yep. scariest movie you saw but when you went to close your eyes at night yeah <laughs> that's my problem with horror movies in general it's just like i am not like i'm not a horror guy but like 
during the movie i don't hate them as much as like i like say i hate them and then it's like right after i'll go to go to bed or something i'm like yeah i'm not gonna sleep tonight that's great um so that's exactly what this was uh and just i didn't find it horror or uh horrible like horribly scary during the movie and then after the fact i was like holy shit the empty man's gonna get me i'm fucked (laughs) um i gotta say like 10 hail marys before going to bed like 15 our fathers and just make (laughs) sure i'm not getting fucking possessed um like you guys mentioned way too long way way too long and and while i liked the opening 20 or I didn't, I didn't hate the opening 20. Um, if they would have cut that out, I think you have the same exact movie, just 25 minutes short. He's fine. Um, it, it, like I, I, I really, I understand like it later in the movie and not to spoil anything. He goes to like the cult place or whatever, and they find yeah. things about the first person. Um, uh, but I don't know. You could have found that. Too. I don't know for me. It just like, and, and like Tyler said, the production, value just looked kind of shit um in my opinion and i i just put i just put my review on letterboxd and it's very quick but i gave it a two out of five or 43 out of 100 and i said like it's hard for me to review a horror movie in the sense like if i don't love it i'm also probably gonna knock it just because it's a horror movie and i'm like i don't like <laughs> i don't like this genre so like i probably don't like it even more so maybe i'm a little too harsh on it being a two out of 100 but just didn't do anything for me uh like hereditary i think is one of the most fucked up movies and i i probably don't hold it as high as most um most likely probably because it's horror and scares the shit out of me but i do see a lot in that where like the production looks great the acting is incredible the uh like the whole cast is fantastic and it's fucking terrifying but this like for me like everything was okay and it wasn't that scary so like it just it wasn't for me like, yeah, like yeah. most horror movies, you know. Fair. J- just because you brought it up, I want to touch on that one scene where, like, he goes and finally like sees the cult. Because I thought the whole movie did like a decent job at like kind of making me feel like uncomfortable. Like there was like a level of uncertainty where like you just didn't know what was going to happen. That scene where like he's in the woods watching the cult, and then the lights go out, and like they walk up to the lake, and they're kind of looking at him, and like quickly taking i was <laughs> fucked up man yeah, I, that's bugging. i don't know what it was about that scene it just scared the shit out of me because like maybe it was like the camera angle because the camera was like kind of like in the place of where the guy was standing so it made you feel like you were there but like he took a step back they took a step forward he took a step back they like took a step forward and like leaned their head to the side like they were looking at him i literally i was like nah nah nah, nah. no fucking way that shit frightened me and the entire movie and seth i'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this i don't think this movie was like scary really like i thought it had like an uncomfortable aura around it just like you didn't know what was gonna happen but like i was never truly like frightened except for that one scene scared the shit out of me seth Let's get your thoughts. This was also your first time watching. I don't know your rating because you didn't rate it on Letterboxd. So I don't know. I don't know my rating. I, yeah, I, I, I don't even know where you stand. We didn't really talk about it. It's funny because so I liked it. I did like it. I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I love it. I'm not going to sit here and say that I liked everything because I certainly didn't. Um, a lot of them go over in spoilers, some of the narrative choices. Um, first 20 minutes, I'm kind of with George. Actually, I actually really, really enjoyed it. I, 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 to be honest, I actually think the production across the board was generally pretty good there were some scenes here and there which i didn't particularly favor but this this might be shocking coming from me especially when all three of you you know had an issue with it which i completely understand by the way i actually didn't have an issue with the time the 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 length of it because i can't sit here and be engaged the whole time and then come on and say you know i had an issue with it because it wouldn't make sense because i was engaged the whole time um there are some there are some choices in this that I wouldn't say it was particularly scary. I think it was more uncomfortable. I do think the cult scene was creepy as fuck. That was definitely a scene that I really, really enjoyed. My I, I do like cult horror. I like uh the ambiguous nature. I like trying to I'd, I'd say it's more of a mystery than a horror. Like you're trying to find out things rather than it being a horror which throws, you know, a generic modern day horror which throws jump scares you around every corner. There is horror elements, of course, but I think it's more um the mystery the ambiguity of, of it all and and i really do like that but the main like i guess drawback for me was i think it changed a lot tonally i think it was like sometimes this dark methodically crafted mystery and then sometimes it was almost like a a, a campy um slasher at points um especially within the first 20 minutes which is fine i i enjoy both of them but i think tonally it kept 
doing different things it almost felt like there was three different films in one which is definitely where i think a lot of the uh, the criticism comes back from it being too long because it very much does switch back and forth between plays you know the first 20 minutes we've got it's kind of creepy but i guess high school whatever like um classic horror you're used to seeing that it goes into like this mystery and then kind of switches back and forth and it's like this sort of slasher but I, i think it really needed to find a sense of direction um i won't go into it yet but the ending i didn't love obviously we can see on some spoilers but i didn't love the, the choice it took there but at the end of the day i really liked it i think it was well crafted i i loved the, the the unknown i think it was well shot i think it, it you know it did have its its moments of of a creepy nature i don't know where i stand on this year if i had to guess i might between a three and a four maybe i might just go with 3.5 because you know it's the easiest way to go because i did like it um but there was uh there was issues especially with the the final lights for me where i do think it fell off but like, i was like you george i actually first 20 minutes man that was just classic horror and i really you know like it was that. yeah the first 20 minutes and all right let's let's get the spoilers um so again if you haven't seen the empty man um just hop off this episode go watch it definitely worth the time especially if you're into horror uh, it definitely does a lot of cool genre bending stuff um but spoiler time so please leave if you haven't seen the movie the first 20 minutes I thought were like really cool. I think, I think the movie set up like a very eerie aesthetic. Um, you, you didn't quite know what was going on. It obviously starts the movie on day three. So like the point of the opening 20 minutes is like you're not supposed to understand what was going on. You're just supposed to kind of watch, experience what these characters are going through. And that'll set the tone for the movie. Um, I thought like my jaw nearly like hit the floor when they're sitting by the bridge and the woman just stabs her friend, slits her other friend's throat and then throws herself off the cliff. Like that, that I think was such a brilliant, like brilliantly crafted horror scene because like nothing before that was like building up to such an event. The score wasn't like slowly building the, the characters like, their tones and their voices weren't getting louder or anything. And then even as it went down, there was still like this very like melodic background music that just made it like kind of like tragic, but also like we don't know what's going on. So it just kind of came out of nowhere. And then like you said, Seth, after that, this movie was just kind of like tonally all over the place for me. After those first 20 minutes, it turns into like this mystery thriller uh slight family drama type movie then we move into more of like uh a psycho or a suspiria like a very eerie film for like 20 25 minutes and then the back half of the movie or the back like third of the movie it's straight like sadistic cult vibes so it was just like super all over the place now that's that's where i think the downfall of this movie was that i just didn't know how to juggle all of that well you told me seth to watch kill list and i think that movie does all of that brilliantly it's a that mystery to the cult mystery yeah it's a mystery thriller it's a crime drama it's a it's a gory whatever torture porn movie at times and then it turns into a sadistic cult film and it just balances everything brilliantly um so like that also may have like hurt my rating on this movie because the entire time I was watching this, I just kept thinking of Kill Us and I was like, that's a movie that did all of this just very, very there good. Is, there is similarities with certain scenes. You know, like the, the, the cool scene where they're like chasing them. They're yeah, really exactly. Cool. Yeah, there, there's a lot of like, yeah. E- even I was noticing this one other scene, like the entire bathroom scene, like that was very psycho-esque to me. I absolutely loved like that shot where like, you vaguely see the silhouette of the girl's face and then like the camera pans around and the empty man is there or whatever. Um, And then it cuts back and you see that the girl is like doing it to herself. Like I thought that scene was like crafted very well. This movie, weird comparison because we just talked about it on our real talk episode feels like dead reckoning part one where it has like glimpses of like amazing horror moments where and like mission impossible dead reckoning part one has like moments of like amazing action some of the best action i've seen in the mission impossible franchise but the storytelling around it was just a little weak for me i don't know if that makes sense 
But Mission Impossible uh, is a much better movie. Don't the, the vibe this wrong. gave me major vibes of is Vecna from Stranger Things, especially with the way it wraps up. Yeah. Like, yeah. With like a hive yeah. mind and like, you know, it's something like, you know, like especially the way it like possesses the dude too, like how, you know, it goes yeah. into the throat. Like got a lot of like, and like, he, you know, he's kind of like the cult leader of everything. I know this, this had like a cult around him, whereas Vecna was kind of, I don't know. It's been a while since I watched Stranger Things. It was just like Vecna working alone, basically. There's no like cult following him, but the way he like kind of, Got inside people's heads and took took hold of them and kind of controlled everything and uh, dragged people down to this underworld. Gave me major Stranger Things Vecna vibes, and I think a lot of the imagery as well was like not inspired by Stranger Things, but a lot of it was very similar because this obviously came out before that that Stranger Things did uh, season three with Vecna or whatever. But but yeah, I don't know uh, a lot of Vecna vibes, but I don't know. Like I, I want to get into the ending because I think that's I where like this that. like almost went completely off the rails for me. And I agree. It didn't quite go that far though. So like, I still like the movie, but I definitely think, cause I know like cam's the only one who didn't really like enjoy m- much of the first o- opening of it, but I really did. I agree with what George said that everything kind of got, they didn't really know exactly what kind of movie they wanted to make here. And then the ending, like, I don't know. There's just like, I really dug the whole cult aspect. And that's when I was my most engaged and locked in the movie was the scene George was talking about where the, the cults, you know, midsummer running around that tree on fire and then just starts slowly like it's like a hive just starts like moving towards them and that coordinated stepping so creepy and I was so engaged and I was like I need to see this cult unfold and it, it does unfold but the way it does so and the way like the final 15 minutes go almost derailed the movie for me so I know Seth you had something to say about that so I wanted to push it over to you yeah like so obviously we it's interesting so you know I, I, did we say the premise of this film do we see like the the briefs and no, we should over? probably read over that. No, I didn't. I could pull it up real quick. If you have it up, go for it. Uh, yeah, I do. Two sucks. All right. So it does the synopsis of this film. So after a group of teens from a small midwestern town begin to mysteriously disappear, the locals believe it to be a work of the uh, of an urban legend known as the Empty Man. As a retired cop investigates and struggles to make sense of the stories, he discovers a, a horrific secret that puts his life and the lives of, of, of those close to him in grave danger. Um, the retired cop is basically a, a widow. He's friends with a, or well, as we find out, was having an affair with a widow across the street whose husband died a couple of years ago. She he she has a daughter, and then basically the the story follows him as he's trying to uncover these crimes because his, uh, the the woman's daughter has disappeared. I'm trying to uncover where everyone is, into in the friends. This is kind of where the issue for this film came into me because the whole time I was enjoying the fact he was trying to work her right around it. He was, you know, finding out that, he, that the daughter was involved in a cult. He was asking questions around it. He was finding all this backstory towards the empty man and towards um, the the whole the whole concept, the cult, the following, whatever. And so the ending for me, man. So obviously we find out at the ending that basically the main character is like a manifestation of the cult. He's like a was is it like a Tulip? What's it called? A Tula or something like that? Um, oh, you know, what's it called? I don't know. It's a, there's a word for it anyway. But he's like a manifestation of the cult. Um, and he's like he, he they they used his body as a as a being, and all the memories he has are false. He's not real. The, the, he's a manifestation. I didn't like that because I think that the whole point, the, the reason this film works for me the way that it did throughout the middle and the start act is the ambiguity, the the, the unknown. And I think that we we could have done actually not knowing that because it ruins the whole unknown part of the whole film i don't need a plot twist like that i don't need it i want to go off on my own interpretations maybe potentially uh, create the creature at the end but then when she directly tells him you know that you are a a manifestation i can't remember the word now but that's annoying i think it almost undermines the rest of the film and how how brilliantly they created this mystery because i think it would have worked if they had continued that and not just said um exactly what it is i think it, it lost weight there does that make sense yeah it's a tulpa. Is that the word you're looking tulpa. for? That's the one. Tulpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a tulpa. Yeah. Tulpa. So he's like, they the cult is. Um, I don't know the exact like terminology, but the cult is basically using his body as like an entity. Yeah. And, and he's he, only been alive for like three days. Three and days, and he has yeah. all these memories that have been uh, created by them. A tulpa is a concept in philosophy, uh, mysticism, and the paranormal of a materialized being or thought form, typically in a human yeah. form, that is created through spiritual practice. So this man who has all these memories, who's an ex-police officer, is basically been created by the cult as like a form to use his body and he's only yeah. been a little form. I always hate those I always hate those uh um like kind of I don't know. It doesn't make any sense because it's like how does this other person, what's her name? Um how do they like, have the memories? Yeah, how do they how know they each other and like he's in the room like, and he, 
created all these memories from else but then that's obviously where it it's not real it. but like it's just like it's it, one of those things that i'm like ah, i just don't love that wouldn't you agree, agree Cam, that, like even though it's feel not like, real already that it's like paranormal that makes it even worse because that just that pulls me away even further because it's like where are we where are they getting all these memories from yeah like it just that. takes like, me out of it a little bit in the sense that uh i don't know i, I feel like an ambiguous ending for a for a horror thriller like makes it amplifies the movie a little bit especially with that sort of film yeah, yeah exactly because I'd, I'd prefer to be on here speaking to you guys over explained about... yeah I, I feel like i'd be on here like oh what do you think happened what do you think happened but yeah instead we get like an ending that's like okay great do you know what i mean yeah i yeah. feel like the ambiguity is what works most for this film i think one of the reasons for that is because the studio issues like the because i was reading up and it was really interesting like so this happened this was released after the merger but it used it was like it still used the pre-merger like intro sequence, which like, and, and it was like basically like a couple of years since they ever used that intro sequence, like the 20th Century Fox, the way it was. So basically, like everyone's kind of assumption is that this movie was like finished and like just put on a hard drive somewhere, and then just like years later, they just didn't even look, they didn't even cut it, edit it, look at it. They're just like, oh yeah, let's just push this out because this movie made two nickels at the box office and it made so little money. They, they didn't even put it out on DVD. There's no physical media of this. Cause they said like, it just would simply be a massive loss of money. Just like this movie Why did made you like nothing. It was on Hulu. Watch it on uh, For me. It was, I watched it on YouTube TV. I watched you it on got, YouTube. Yeah. Oh, so I yeah. shouldn't do it on Hulu. It's on Disney plus. For right. Me. So yeah, it's, it's, it's on Hulu as well. I, I think you need like the premium Hulu. Subscription, you have, to, though. you have to have the like live TV. Right. Fun but, fact. If you have the live TV of Hulu, you have live TV on YouTube TV. Like either of them are the same thing. So oh, fun I fact, I know that because I have YouTube TV. That's good to know. Um, yes, but yeah. So uh, yeah, I think this is just the one where like they just like finish this movie in the midst of the merger, and like this definitely could have done from a cut. Like I like the beginning, but I can totally see what Cam said. If you cut out that first twenty minutes to make it like a, a more concise film. I don't think it would have changed too much. The ending, I think, definitely could have been reworked. But I think this is just simply a movie where they're like, you know, we got this far. Let's just throw it out there. But it's so like the blonde girl, Marin Ireland, is the actress's name. I, for some reason, like, she always gives me creepy vibes, everything she's in. I looked at her filmography, and she is in, like, a decent amount of horror, but, like, not just strictly creepy movies. But it, it came to me when I saw that she was in The Boogeyman, which I just recently watched. Because I was like, when I was watching this and saw her, I'm like, oh, she just always is bad news. Like, whenever she's in a movie, like some creepy shit's going on and obviously the bye bye man the boogeyman have very similar natures in terms of the narrative they're trying to tell so yeah interesting that she's in both and yeah i don't know for me like i am a horror wuss so i was officially scared throughout this mostly on edge but i i mean I, cause there's like never anything that made me jump out of my seat but definitely i was like uncomfortable for the majority of this but yeah. which i guess is like a positive really over jump scares that are just used for that one second you know of stunt right exactly and i also i will say so cam's not on an island i also like watched this and finished it right before bed and like i was like i, I like turned it off and went right to bed and i was like ah, i need to scroll tiktok a bit and, like i need to <laughs> need to cool down the brain yeah a bit gotta, gotta the clear the mind a little <laughs> like, had to clear yeah. the mind I, a bit uh, <laughs> i will say two things as well first of all one thing that was major distracting to me was the girl's haircut crazy uh that, that bowl cut yeah, that's really bad. That yeah, was crazy. Really bad. I was wondering which girl you were talking about. I was like, I don't know. Be. I was like, they all have fairly basic no, yeah, haircuts. We're not right, doing right, that. Right, right, um, right. And also, come. I've got a little fact for you now. Okay. The cinematographer on this film was also the cinematographer on the Kissing Booth trilogy. Nice. That's, that's why I look so good. That's yeah, why yeah, exactly. I look so good. Yeah, that's impressive. That's awesome. Uh, that's a res- that's a resume right there. Yeah. Like yeah. three kissing booth movies and the empty man. The empty man. And the first purge, apparently. Yeah. Which wasn't great. That's probably yeah. better. I've never seen it. But no, it's probably no, 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 I think no, that no, girl's no. haircut just wait, further wait, further sorry. played into my mind the Stranger Things connection because like she looked like Will Byers yeah. from Stranger Things that bowl cut. Stop, so, like, stop, that, stop. What do you mean wait. stop? That's literally the bowl I mean, I know it's just so disrespectful. Steph. Do you mean the like original Purge or the, no, the there's a movie purge. that came out called The First Purge? The right? First Purge. The isn't one that, that one really bad? Bad. Yeah, isn't that one? Bad, yeah, bad, okay, bad, okay, bad, okay, bad, 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 Tough bad. resume, man. All right. Yeah, not, we, not will, me, anyway. we will wrap up episode real quick, episode 44. Oh, 75. <laughs> well, wait. I, I, re, real, it was real talk episode 45 this week. So I think I had that number. Um, real quick, episode 75. Shout out Marcellus for the recommendation. Cam with the two out of five. 
myself and Tyler with a three out of five, and Seth a three with and a, a half. half. With, a heart, with a heart. I'll give it a heart. I think it's right. a three and a half. I think it's a three. All right, we'll go with the three and a half. Um, again, if you want to be able to, to recommend movies, drafts, rankings, anything for us to talk about, check out our patron, uh, our Patreon. Um, and then as well, we're all over social media, so make sure you follow us and subscribe where you can. Thank you guys for joining, and we will see you in a few days for Real Talk episode 46.